Problem 6 is a shortest root problem. In this problem, we're trying to figure out how to get from uh, node 1 to all the different nodes in the network. If we go from node 1 to node 2, the distance, of course, is 212 miles. So that's fairly straightforward. But if we're trying to get from node 1 to node 10 in the network, the problem could be a little bit more difficult. There could be several different routes that we could take. And the bigger the network, the more routes there are, the more complicated the problem becomes to solve manually. This is a network problem. We can represent the network uh, using balance of flow constraints. And to set this problem up as a shortest route problem, our supply at node 1, or the starting point, will be 1. And our demand at the destination will be 1 as well. Supplier demand at all the intermediate nodes will be 0. And this allows us to set up our balance of flow constraint, where supply is equal to demand. So our balance of flow constraints will be strict equalities. We'll have one balance of flow constraint at each node. Most of them will be inflow minus outflow is equal to 0. What this will ensure is that if we go to a node, then we have to leave a node. If we don't go to a node, then we can't leave the node. Our decision variables in the problem, x, i, j, will be the decision to travel from node i to node j. These decision variables will take on a value of 1 if we travel the route, or link 0 if we do not. Now, another thing that we'll go ahead and define is c, i, j, being the cost or distance to travel from I to J. Our constraints. The basic uh, constraint will be inflow minus outflow is equal to supplier demand. We'll do this for node 1, node 2, node 7, and node 10. Again, we will need a constraint for each node in the network. We'll just do those four as representative nodes for the, this particular network. At node 1, we have no inflow into node 1. We do have outflow from x1, 2, x1, 3, and x1, 6. And the relationship is a strict equality because supply equals demand. Supply at our starting node is 1. And that is negative because it is a supply. At node 2, we have inflow to node 2, x1, 2. Notice that it went out at node 1. It goes into node 2. That's the only inflow there. x2, 5, and x2, 6 are the outflows there. And it's neither a starting point nor a destination, so the supply demand will be 0. At node 7, we've got three arcs going into node 7. x. 4, 7, x, 6, 7, and x, 9, 7. Outflows, x, 7 to 10. And again, that's not the source or the destination, so supply and demand will be 0. At node 10, we only have inflow there, x, 4, 10, and x, 7, 10 are the inflows, no outflows, and we do have demand because that is the destination, so our demand there will be 1. Now, non-negativity. We can go ahead and determine or, or require that x, i, j be greater than or equal to 0. We said that these decision variables are going to take on binary values. And they will take on binary values regardless of whether we declare the decision variable binary. It is simpler for the simplex algorithm to solve a linear problem versus an integer problem. So we'll avoid the binary constraints. Now the last thing we need to look at is our objective function.
<clears throat> again, our decision variables are going to act as binary variables. They will take on a value of 1 if we decide to move from node i to node j, 0 if we do not. Uh, once again, the decision variable represents the decision to move from node i to node j. In our network, we also know what the distance is between each node. When we look at our network, we can see that the distance between node 1 and 2 is 212 miles. If we're going to make that decision to go from node 1 to 2, the decision variable x12 will take on a value of 1 and that decision variable multiplied by the distance would then be counted in our objective function. If we decide not to, for instance, if we decide to go from node 1 to node 3 instead, decision variable x12 is going to take on a value of 0, and if we multiply that 0 by 212, we get a total of 0. So what we're going to do for the objective function is we are going to add all of the distances, say, Cij multiplied by the decision variable Xij. Add those all together. Again, the decision variables acting binary, we're only going to end up counting those uh, distances or costs that are on the path. We're going to ignore the ones that are not on the path that we select. And since that is a distance and we're looking for the shortest route, we're going to minimize the total distance. If we would like to write this out longhand, the way this would start out is 212x12 plus 212x13 plus 241x16, all three arcs leading from node 1. Going to node 2, plus 206, x25, and so forth. Now, going to Excel. Again, we have set this problem up with our decision variables in column A. Column B identifies the from for that decision variable. Column D identifies the to. So this first decision variable is x12, representing the decision to travel from Jackson to Memphis. This decision variable, x36, the decision to travel from Baton Rouge to Birmingham. Distance. We have the distance for each arc as well, and we can put those two together to get our objective function using the sum product function. Decision variables, comma, let's try that one more time. Decision variables, comma, distances. Now, on the inflow side, once again, we're going to use the SUMIF function on the inflow to determine the flow going to a node. SUMIF, first argument, the range, I'm looking at the to range because I want to know if a arc or if a decision variable is going to Jackson. I'm going to be copying this down and I want to continue to refer to the to range, so I'm going to make the first argument an absolute. Second argument is the node that I'm looking for. That will be a relative reference. And the third argument, the sum range. When I find a match, if and when I find a match, I want to add the value that the decision variable is taking. That, too, will be an absolute reference. So for the three arguments, sum if function, the first and third argument are absolute. The second is relative. On the outflow side, we're again going to use the sum if function. Range this time will be the from nodes, absolute reference. Criteria, relative reference, and then the decision variables, absolute reference. First and third, absolute, second is relative. Our net flow will equal the inflow minus the outflow. 
and we can copy these three functions down to get our balance flow constraints. So if we have decision to travel from Jackson to Memphis, outflow at Jackson, inflow at Memphis, Memphis to Birmingham, outflow of Memphis, inflow to Birmingham, from Birmingham to Knoxville, outflow of Birmingham, inflow at Knoxville, and from Knoxville can we go to Atlanta? Yes, and from Atlanta to where? Let's go to Montgomery. And Montgomery to Tallahassee, node 10. So we've made it from Jackson to Tallahassee, total distance of 1,278. And notice that our net flows equal our supply and demand. Now to get this into Solver. I'm going to bring Solver up. Our target cell will be our distance, total distance. We want to minimize this by changing cells, our decision variables, subject to our balance of flow constraints. Left hand side must equal the right hand side. Options. We'll declare linear model and non-negative and let this solve. Now Solver found a solution. Distance is 539 miles. We go from Jackson to Birmingham, Birmingham to Montgomery, Montgomery to Tallahassee.